What better way to celebrate the holidays than with that jolly old elf himself, Chef Tell, who has come back to be with us here on Newswatch 8 at noon. And this is fantastic having you here the day before Christmas. It's a pleasure, Jack. Thank you. They don't call me Rudolph for nothing, you know what I mean? <laughs> we kind of do a little chicken dish. Everybody has turkey and ham for Christmas, all this stuff. So I make a little chicken. We add a little olive oil in the saute pan here, not too much, just a little bit. I'm going to take a clove of garlic, take a garlic like this, hit it like this, you know, this way it's easy to peel. The peel comes right off, this goes over here, and then we have the garlic. If you don't want the garlic, don't add it in there. Very nice, very simple. And this garlic we're going to add in our saute pan on top of the beautiful, nice, hot olive oil. What did that smashing it do besides make it easy to get apart? Does that release That's the, the idea. juices or no, something? No, it doesn't like release that? the juices, it just makes the peel come off, you know? Oh. Just like this, and then it's, you don't have to peel it, don't use your fingernail and all that stuff, you know? Makes then sense. Then we just the chicken breast, we slice it down in thin strips. If you serve your friends one piece of chicken breast like this, they say it's one piece. You cut it up like this, they say I had a lot of chicken, you know? It's small little pieces. <laughs> it's the eye up here, what can I tell you? Just add this right in there. Not too much, just a little bit. You see this? It goes right in here. A little salt, a little pepper. Just like, you know how the German chefs add salt in food? How? The German chefs do it like this. So you know how the French guys do it? The how? French chefs always make a big show when they do something. This is how the French guys do it. They take a little salt, they stand back there, they go, ça va, ça va, ça va. <laughs> and every time they say ça va, they charge you two more dollars, okay? <laughs> so we're just gonna cook this a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Yeah. Then we're gonna take some green squash, slice this down like this, you know? Beautiful, nice chicken primavera, don't cut your fingers. Slice this down like this, and then you slice it down like this. Of course, you also can run into a food processor. It takes 15 seconds to run into the machine, and 45 minutes to wash it, you know? Oh, you might yeah. as well then just do it like this. This goes right in here. That's a key Little. to being a great chef, is being able to really handle a knife real well. Yeah, and don't cut yourself. That helps a lot, you know, otherwise you walk around like this. You know the difference between red pepper and green pepper? Uh, aside from the color, no. Aside from the color? What? The red pepper is ripe, and the green pepper is unripe. What? All pepper turns to bread. They sell the green pepper because it has a longer shelf life, okay? Ah. You know what they do with red pepper in Europe? They hang it up, they dry them, they let it run to a mill. What comes out is paprika powder. Paprika powder is made out of red, sweet, ripe peppers. What you is the difference have? in the taste then? If this, if this ripens... This is sweet this and this is not sweet. That's why they call it sweet peppers. This is sweet, very nice and sweet. Even you can smell it. You know how beautiful, nice it smells? That's a good looking pepper. Excellent. If you want some color in the food, you know, we have a little white wine in there, just like this, not too much, just a little bit. <laughs> if you don't want to use white wine for whatever reason, you also just can use a little chicken stock, however the white wine works as a tenderizer. Incidentally, we are going to have a recipe for you a little later. The obvious do? best way to do it is to have him cook it for you. But uh, Yeah, I make house calls, and we're going to take an onion. <laughs> <laughs> I did it before, I'll Jack, you, you know that, come on. I hope I never see you in an airplane, you know, I'm going to say hi, Jack, and they throw me in check. <laughs> Anyhow, just go like this, slice it down like this, very nice, very simple, you see this? Now we're going to add our little onions in there, just like this, we cook this for a few more minutes. Ooh. Then we're going to throw it to there, that's how they do this. So it's just like this, and the first time we do this at home, we do it over your sink, just in case. <laughs> it's much easier to clean up. Going to chop a little parsley. Take this over here, just like this, very nice, very simple. Take your knife. Oh, look at that. Very nice, no big deal. And that's a nice dish, especially also, I'll tell you one thing, if you have turkey for Christmas, you have some leftovers, just use the, use the turkey meat instead of chicken meat, don't tell your friends about it, they're never gonna find out. Also, it helps a lot, if you have a leftover, don't serve it the next day, wait for one day in between. This way they forget it, you know, don't serve like the 27, <laughs> give one day and then put a different color on it, different flavor, and you're gonna get away with it, just like this. This goes over here, put this in here, one more time. We're gonna take some, let me clear this up. Let's do, we had this do it in a restaurant, you just go like this, you see this, very nice <laughs> and clean. do that in a restaurant, huh? Hey, what can I tell you? We're gonna take some of our pasta, very nice, look at this, beautiful. Oh yeah. Put this right in here. I'm going to take some of our chicken, which is almost cooked. Just a little bit on here, see? Very nice, very simple. Ooh, yeah. This is nice and refreshing, beautiful, excellent, colorful, healthy. But oh, there's more. That's what they do in a restaurant. They always add some parsley and they charge another 250 you know what I mean? <laughs> just like this. You might Marshall not eat it, but pretty expensive should. stuff. Okay, just like this. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? That's you fantastic. You can do it too. Make it be turkey, make it be chicken, Everybody. whatever you want to do. Voila! Voila, you got that right. We're going to have a little conversation with Chef Tell when we continue with Tampa Bay's only new news hour. Wes Sargentson. 
Marissa Morris. The best in the field on Life at Five. Back once again with Chef Tell, who hath whipped up something for tomorrow's Christmas repast using chicken instead of the traditional turkey or ham. But uh, we got a few moments we can we can chat a while with a chef, one of the best known chefs in America. How did you get into cooking, by the way? Uh, growing up post-war Germany, there was not much food around, and I was just employed in the kitchen. My mother employed me in the kitchen. There was no kindergarten. There was no preschool. And she just kept me in the kitchen, occupied, do this, do this, do this, you know, you were, you were curfew, you weren't allowed to go out after two o'clock in the afternoon. And during this time, she said, you know, we always were hungry, everything was rushing, you got one slice of bread a day, you got one ounce of margarine in a week. And we were hungry a lot, you know, she said, become a cook, become a cook, you're never going to be hungry, you're never going to be hungry. So that sank in my mind at that time, however, I just was employed in the kitchen. She kept me busy, she showed me this, this, and I showed you some of her recipes. And she was very great. If we didn't have all ingredients, she just made something out of almost nothing. We were more fortunate than other Germans at the time because our house was occupied by American officers. We got care boxes right away. Yeah. Some other people didn't, and so, I mean... And now I work for CARE. I do commercials for CARE now, like 40 years later. It's incredible. Well, you have, obviously, a flair, a personality that's, that's uh, unbelievable, and that, that helps immensely. Now, just, we were off camera a moment ago. If I can show you this, he showed me how you can tell if meat is well done. Show me that. If, this is, is if well you done, have right. your palm of your hand like this and you touch, what is this part called? Whatever this the part is called. The heel of your hand. The heel of your hand. This is rare meat. It feels like this. If you apply the pressure on your thumb, this is how meat feels when it's well done. If you grill something, I mean, that's some basic. That's yeah. just all meats like this. But you've learned a lot of that stuff over the years. How you 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 got some? Uh, you just go up a couple of times. The chef hits you, and all of a sudden you pick it up. <laughs> with you know. I'm not kidding. It's not a good motivation, but it's a fast one. I was my apprenticeship. I started my apprenticeship when I was 13. I left my home. And the chef at that time, he beat me up at least two times a day for whatever reason. I mean, I was in apprenticeship for two days and he said to me, cook potatoes for, pot for potato salad. And I said, how do you do it? He said, you stupid, you this, you this. So you take the, to you take the potatoes, you wash them, you throw them in a pot, you add a handful of salt, a half a handful of caraway, you put a lid on top, you put them on the stove. It's exactly what I did. He never mentioned water. <laughs> so half hour later, man, black smoke coming out. So he beat me up again. I mean, this is not a joke. That's how they train you over there. The needless to say, I saw him eight years ago, and he still cooks in that same kitchen where I made my apprenticeship. And I walked up to him and said, listen, I have a TV show in America. I drive six cars, a Porsche, Mercedes, a Rolls Royce, and a Jaguar. You're still cooking window schnitzel. Who is the stupid one? <laughs> so this is not a joke. So he learned since then, you know, but that's, that's what happened. Your name isn't actually Chef Tell, or it isn't Tell uh, It's chef, it's chef of room, but Paul Tell is, Erhard. my real name is Friedemann Paul Erhardt. Friedemann Bach was uh, Sebastian Bach's son, and I was from 1942, apparently, and my mother fell in love with the name. I was born 1943, I ended up with the name Friedemann. Friedman was just a long name that my friends, after I played William Tell in graduation in the school, in the oh, high school in William Germany, Tell. they just called me then Tell. Instead of Friedemann Paul Erhardt, they called me Tell and then Tell Erhardt. Then I came to America and they called me Chef Tell. I said, hey, I keep it, man. Why change now, you know? Oh, it's been a then they called it Show and Tell, Kiss and Tell, Motel. <laughs> <laughs> One other thing, and that is, how did you spend your Christmases when you were young, growing up in Germany? In Germany, what kind of it's in Germany it said, Christmas Eve is more important. Christmas Eve around 4 o'clock, the, the tree is all decked out and the presents are there and there's a little bell on the Christmas tree. And then Chris Kind, Chris Kindle comes, not Chris Kindle, Chris Kind, it's a little fair girl, you know. And she comes, she rings the bell, and then you allow allowed to run in there and p open up your gifts and so. And also, then the next day you just visit family. However, in Germany, and on St. Nicholas Day, which is the 6th of December, St. Nicholas comes. From whom we get Santa Claus. You, Santa yeah, Claus. Santa Claus, he comes, and you give him your wish list, what you like for Christmas. You give him the, 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 the toys which had to be repaired. And then you put sometimes a shoe out at night or boot. And if you were a good kid, it puts cookies in. If you're a bad kid, they put charcoal in, you know. And then he comes on the next morning and you give him your wish list. You have to say a little rhyme or a little verse, you know, dear St. Claus and this and that. And then on, on Christmas Eve, most likely again. So and we, eat, uh, we eat turkey sometimes or roast goose or duck or whatever. And no doubt very good at your house with all that. <laughs> My experience. house is, of course, that's always there. Yeah. Chef Tell, thanks a million for being with us the this day before anytime. Christmas. If and I have holidays and... Uh, if you don't get the recipe, I make house calls too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chef Tell joining us and hopefully again in the not too distant future here on Newswatch 8 at noon. And we'll be back with more in a jiffy.